Well, hello and welcome to my latest video. Now, I mentioned on my live stream earlier, I will be doing this video later on today, and here it is. The top 100 boxers who have the most fights against top 10 rated fighters in their careers. Now, uh, to people who follow my channel a long time, they know I did stat countdowns in 2018, October, 2019, and October. Now, even though it's only been from October until July now, okay, there has been a lot of change um, since I last did this top 100 last October. Many more fighters have been added to my database. Many more fighters have been included in this top 100. A whole number of fighters in the last top 100 have been moved out, okay? So I just thought, you know, I'd do an updated video, okay? An updated video showing Billy Wallace and Glick and Lomsky and Skoza and all the other fighters who've been added who've joined this list to see how it has changed from the October version. So let's go to the first 10 going 100 to 91 on this countdown. Now in 100th place, okay, is Tippy Larkin, okay, just barely gets in at 100. Um, ahead of him is Charlie Burley, who also is clinging on to that top 100 spot, um, like a hyena clinging onto a carcass uh, with 34 top 10 rated fights. Jackie Fields comes next in 98 with 34, and in 97th place is Fred Apostoli, also with 34. Then we go on to a bunch of fighters who have 35 in 96 places. Great Mexican fighter Kid Azteca with 35. The Bobcat Bob Montgomery comes next in 95th place, also with 35. While in 94th place, Carl Bobo Olsen, the Hawaiian Punch, uh, comes in with 35. And the final fighter on 35, he's had 36 fights against champions, all of famous and rated, uh, but one of them wasn't top 10 rated. So Manny Pacquiao comes in 93rd place with 35 fights against top 10 rated fighters, which is a massive amount for a modern fighter. As are his two fellow compatriots from the Mombondi era in this first 10, Bernard the Executioner Hopkins comes in 92nd place uh, with 36. Okay, so if Pacquiao fights another top 10 rated fighter, he will join Holyfield and Hopkins on 36 as as stated Evander Holyfield is in 91st place also with 36 so these numbers here are the first 10 of the top 100 now these numbers are not high compared to what's to come um, but it's interesting like I mentioned earlier on my live stream one thing I can say is that in fighting top 10 rated opponents the more modern fighters fight less so they amass less fights against those rated kind of opponents not saying the opponents are better in the old time just saying as an average the fight more top 10 rated opposition so holyfield is in 91 let's jump onto the countdown going 90 to 81 so in 90th place, okay, is former middleweight champion Vince Dundee with 36 top 10 rated fights. Uh, Solid Krieger, a new entry, also comes in with 36 in 89th place. And in 88th place, okay, is former lowweight champion Battling Battolino with 36. Now jumping up to 37, okay, in 87th place, we have Jock Malone. Uh, with 37. 86th place, okay, we have former light heavyweight Bob Godwin with 37. And in 85th place, former longtime lineal champion, helped out a bit by the war, is Gus Lesnovich, also with the handsome prize ducking, uh, also with uh, 37 fights against top 10 rated opponents. Now, in 84th place, okay, is one of the Black Murderers row and one of the first of many on this countdown. Uh, Bert Littell, okay, comes in 84th place with 38 fights against top 10 rated opponents. And in 83rd place, another new entry from October, Gil Turner, also comes in with a mighty impressive 38. And what a tough resume he had. In 82nd place, okay, former NBA middleweight champion Gorilla Jones comes in with 38. And in 81st place, the fighter from the more modern era last 25 years with the most at the moment, uh, Pacquiao could potentially overtake him. Uh, but Roy Jones Jr. Um, comes in with 38. He's in 81st place and like I said, to my knowledge, he's the fighter with the highest number of top 10 rated fights from the last 25 years, 995 onwards from what I remember. So there is the latest 10, okay, so there's already new entries in there, okay, Gil Turner, um, um, Solid Krieger, and through the top 100, to those people who saw my one in October, there are massive differences, okay, between this top 100 and that one, many same things, many differences. Now, in 80th place on my countdown, okay, is John Henry Lewis, the great former light heavyweight fighter, comes in also with 38 fights against top 10 rated opponents. And in 79th place, okay, with 39, comes Small Montana. 
78th place um, is Newsboy Brown. Okay, the former flyweight comes in just shy of the 40 mark with 39, as does 77th place Bushy Graham who also scores 39. Former featherweight champion, of course, dethroned by Homicide and Kemri Armstrong, P.T. Cerrone, also comes in with 39, as does the Hermica Hurricane, Lou Ambers. Now, the last fighter on 39 in here is former great lightweight champion, Sammy Mandel, who also has 39 fights against top 10 rated fighters. And there are certain fighters in this top 100, Mandel, uh, Mickey Walker, certain other fighters who did a lot of the work um, in the rating era, but also did some work before the rating era. So they are a bit lower than what they would be at ratings existed back to 1900, say. So in 73rd place, okay, is Baby Joe Gans, the first fighter to hit 40 or above. Uh, former three-time and the only three-time linear lightweight champion of the world, Jimmy Carter, also comes in with 40 top 10 rated fights in 72nd place. And in 71st place, some people may be surprised he's this low in a countdown like this, but great featherweight puncher, okay, Sandy Sadler, uh, comes in 71st place also with 40 fights against top 10 rated opponents. So again, okay, um, a list of tough resumes right there. When you look at all of these guys' resumes, uh, they are very tough, all of them, okay? None of these guys have a weak resume. Um, you know, to fight the level of top 10 rated fighters these guys have fought, you are going to result in having a good resume. That's fairly, fairly, I'll say, in most cases, obvious. So in 70th place on my countdown is multiweight mover Young Stribblin. He comes in with 41 fights against top 10 rated opponents. While the former lightweight terror Sid Terris comes in 69th place also with 41. Harold Johnson sits in 68th place uh, with 41. And in 67th place, okay, the great Filipino super featherweight champion Gabriel Little Flash Elard comes in also with 41. In 66th place, see another new entry, like many on this top 100, Gaspar Ortega, a fighter with a super tough resume. He had 42 fights against top 10 rated fighters. He had more fights against top 10 rated fighters than Terence Crawford has had career fights. Now, in 65th place, the underrated lightweight Willie Joyce comes in also with 42, while Roberto Duran, Okay, um, to Roberto Duran fanboys out there, comes low in this at 64th place uh, with 42 fights against top 10 rated fighters. In fact, just above him in 63rd place is a fighter with virtually 50 fights less in his career than Duran. Jimmy McLan in The Great Fighter himself comes in with 42 uh, from 69, which is impressive. In 62nd place, another new entry since October, Billy Wallace comes in with 43 fights against top 10 rated fighters. And another fighter who's very underrated, whose resume buries many of the so-called top world champions now, is Tony Chucko, okay, in 61st place. Tony Chucko comes in having had 43 uh, fights against top 10 rated opposition. I could also do a top 100 in wins, Top three rated, like I did on my stat countdowns. But like I say on stat videos, after I've had a little mini break, uh, I will just upload what I wish when I wish, you know, nice and chilled. So on to the top 60, okay, on this countdown. Now in 60th place, another new entry, Fred Lenhart, okay, comes in with a massive total of 44, when many people have never heard of him. In 59th place, okay, former champion Lou Bruillard also comes in with 44. And in a career half the size of Lou Bruillard's, if not a little bit less than that, Muhammad Ali comes in 58th place with 44. Luis Manuel Rodriguez, one, of, one fighter I find vastly underrated. Luis Rodriguez comes in 57th place with 45, while the great combination punching body puncher Billy Patrol comes in 56th place with 46. And trust me, Billy Patrol on his day was a real handful, believe me, no joke of an opponent. In 55th place, okay, another of the Black Murderers row. This is the excellent um, an outstanding resume of Lloyd Marshall, which included 47 fights against top 10 rated fighters. While in 54th place, okay, Lou Salica comes in with 47. Why he's not in the hall, like I've said, I'll never know. While in 53rd place, okay, is the Scotch Wop Johnny Dundee, who scored 50-47 uh, fights, sorry, against top 10 rated fighters, scarily, uh, even though most of his resume was before the ratings era. It kind of showed you just what number Johnny Dundee might have reached 
um, had he fought in the ratings era fully. I mean, his number would have probably been 150 minimum. But I can only go on what he's documented. So in 52nd place, okay, another underrated fighter, Al Gaynor comes in with 48 fights against top 10 rated opponents. And the last fighter just outside the top 50, the top of the bottom 50, so to speak, is former middleweight champion Teddy Yaroz. Very underrated resume. He comes in with 48 fights against top 10 rated fighters. So into the top 50, in 50th place, okay, we have another underrated fighter like Yaroz Ken Overlin. He comes in with 48 fights against top 10 rated opponents. Well, in 49th place, okay, the swarming attacker Bo Jack comes in also with 48. In 48th place, another fighter who would have had about 150, 160, 170, no doubt. Harry Greb comes in with 48 fights against top 10 rated opponents. Well, in 47th place, okay, Jackie Kidberg also comes in just shy of the half century club at 50 with 49. Former flyweight Olympic gold medalist world champion Frankie Gennaro comes six. He sits in 46th place, okay, Gennaro has 49 top 10 rated fights. While in 45th place, okay, former bantamweight king, long reigning champion Panama Al Brown, who also fought at flyweight, comes in with 49 top 10 rated fights. And the Cuban bonbon kid chocolate is the last of two fighters to break. Uh, failing to break into the half century. He comes in with 49. And the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis, closes out the list of fighters who did not score a half century at 50 or above. Joe Lewis sits in 43rd place, which really, considering how many people see Joe Lewis's resume, is a very good finish for him. Way above Roberto Duran. So in 42nd place, another new entry. I believe he was added after the ratings update October. I could be wrong. Everett Reitmeyer comes in with 50 fights against top 10 rated fighters. In 41st place, another new entry, Leo Lomsky, uh, who has a fantastic resume, fantastically tough resume. He also, Lomsky, comes in with 50 fights against top 10 rated fighters. Now, these guys are still nowhere near the top numbers, okay? But we are now going to go into the top 40 on this countdown. In 40th place is Joey Giardello, also on 50 fights against top 10 rated fighters. In 39th place, okay, the another weight mover, uh, Baby Arismendi comes in with 51. While another new entry, a pre-rating era fighter, added Chuck Wiggins. Chuck Wiggins comes in 38th place with 52 fights against top 10 rated fighters. And rather scarily, he's another fighter who a lot of his career was before the rating era. So in 37th place, okay, a fighter who was punished a little bit by having a career, partial career before the rating era was Toy Bulldog Mickey Walker. He comes in with 52. While Little Pancho, okay, another of the fantastic Filipino fighters, Little Pancho comes in 36th place with 53. In 35th place is fellow Filipino fighter Seferino Garcia. Rated by many as the greatest Filipino puncher, uh, he comes in with 53 top 10 rated fights. So the last four prior to going into the top 30. In 34th place, Luis Kid Kaplan comes in with 53. And also another very underrated fighter historically, Fidel Lababa, also comes in with 53. But the final two names failing to break into the top 30 are two new entries um, from October last year. The first is... Lou Scorza, who has a fantastically tough resume, really, really does. Lou Scorza is in 32nd place. He had 54 fights against top 10 rated opponents. And another new entry uh, is Pete Lasso in 31st place. He also had a massive 54 fights against top 10 rated fighters. Now, do you notice how many of these fighters are pre-1970s? Nearly all of them, okay? Uh, just to read my point earlier. So, top 30. In 30th place, okay, the Blonde Terror Terror Horte, Charles Bud Taylor. He scored 54 fights against top 10 rated opponents. Well, in 29th place, okay, long reigning super featherweight champion Todd Morgan comes in just above Bud Taylor with 55. The Raging Bull, Jake LaMotta, comes in 28th place with an astonishing 55 fights against top 10 rated opponents. Well, in 27th place, a fighter who gets very little respect for it, but Joey Maxim. He's 27th out of over 530 in most fights against top 10 rated opponents with 56. Willie Pep, okay, Willow the Wisp comes in 26th place, also with 56, like Maxim. 
Well, in 25th place, we have another new entry. Uh, another fantastic resume, one belonging to Leo Rodak, who comes in with a staggering 60 fights against top 10 rated opponents. In 24th place, um, the Cuban hawk Kid Gavilan, rated by me as the greatest Cuban fighter uh, of all time. He comes in with 60 fights against top 10 rated opponents. While in 23rd place, Old Bones Joe Brown, the long reigning lightweight king, he also comes in with 60. Now, the final two names here, okay, who just failed to break into the top 20. In 22nd place, we have former champion, okay, and Henry Armstrong opponent, Chalky Wright. Chalky Wright, who was a rough diamond, who became smoother as he went on, comes in with a massive 61 fights against top 10 rated opponents. And in 21st place, as well as having a whole list of Hall of Fame, beaten Hall of Famers on his ledger, the mighty um, clutch Sammy Ango just fails to break into top 20, coming in with a total of 63 top 10 rated fights. So there's 121 into the top 20. So in 20th place, okay, former lightweight king Ike Williams comes in with a massive total of 64. In 19th place, the former longtime bantamweight champion Manuel Ortiz comes in with a massive total of 66 top 10 rated fights. While in 18th place, uh, Black Murderer's Row member to me, Jimmy Bivins comes in 18th place with a massive 68 fights against top 10 rated opponents. And in 17th place, okay, comes the great six-time champion, um, three-weight champion, six-time lineal champion, Emil Griffith, also with a massive total of 68. Now, 70-plus in 16th place, okay, Wesley Ramey, a fighter who never held a title, comes in with a staggering 70 fights against top 10 rated opponents. And just ahead of Fritzy Zivic, uh, Wesley Ramey, sorry, is indeed Fritzy Zivic, who also scores 70. In 14th place, okay, is Dave Shade. Uh, the welterweight and middleweight with a massive resume and a staggering resume comes in with 71 top 10 rated fights. And in 13th place, the three fighters who failed to break the top 10. In 13th place, the great man himself, okay, the Cincinnati Cobra, Ezard Charles, comes in with a total of 71. Now, just ahead of Ezard Charles are two more of the Black Murderers Row. In 12th place, the great Holman Williams, okay, um, comes in with 72 fights against top 10 rated opponents. And he's picked out by one, okay, by Herbert Lewis Hardwick in 11th place. The Coco Kid comes in with a staggering total of 73 fights against top 10 rated opponents. So there is 100 down to 11. Let me now show you who the top 10 are up to now. Because there could be changes going forward again. So in 10th place, okay, Homicide Hank Henry Armstrong uh, comes in with a mighty total of 81. Ridiculous. In 9th place, new entry Joe Glick, who didn't have a massive winning record in them, but had a staggering 82 fights against top 10 rated opponents. While in 8th place, okay, the mighty featherweight and super featherweight Benny Bass, uh, also like Joe Glick, comes in with 82. And in 7th place, the Philly Phantom Tommy Lochran hits top 10. Most people don't even consider him a top 10 light every week because they don't know anything about him. Okay, but Tommy Lochran comes in 7th place with 82. While in 6th place, okay, the great man himself, Sugar Ray Robinson, um, comes a strong top, ten, strong top 10 finish with 85. Just ahead by one of Sugar Ray Robinson in fifth place is a great five-time lineal three-weight champion, Tony Canzaneri, with one of the most staggering resumes in boxing history. He comes in with 86. And in fourth place, okay, is the former featherweight champion and the great traveller who fought in over a dozen countries, if I recall. I, I've got a list of all countries he fought in, remarkable. Freddie Miller, who was a well-travelled fighter, he comes in with a mind-blowing 88 top 10 rated fights. However, just ahead of Freddie Miller, okay, in third place is the old mongoose Archie Moore, um, who comes third out of over 500, well, in fact, comes third out of 538, okay, with 89 top 10 rated fights. But the top two are probably a surprise. In second place is the mighty midget Walgast, who is only the second fighter to hit 90 or above fights against top 10 rated fighters. But all fighters in this top 100 Pale in comparison, some partially due to circumstance, uh, to the mighty Maxi Rosenblum who tops this top 100 list still with an unconquerable, to me, 145 top 10 rated fights. I'm out for now.